it. This weird contraption is a flying saucer projector lamp. It says so on the box. And I picked it up from Amazon to see just how it works and if it lives up to the claims of the advert. Now what you've got is this unit and obviously it's got, it's got the uh, USB power cable and it comes with a remote as well. And I'll just power it up initially so you can see what it's doing. Now to you, you're not seeing very much. On my ceiling, this is the sort of thing I'm seeing right now. And it's got two different patterns which are selected by choosing the the different LEDs. At the moment it's doing the, uh, the Northern Lights effect. If I press this button on the remote it will change to the other LED and you get like a sort of vortexy galaxy swirl effect. And it is very pretty actually. It does seem to live up to ex the expectations almost of the, the advert. What I didn't realize until after I picked it up that it has actually got Bluetooth as you heard it paired up just now. So what it can do is it can act as a sound, um, basically as a sound bar, as a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, but also, if you press, none of the buttons on the remote will do this, but if you push that button, it will actually turn into a sound to light unit. Uh, it's not going to play now, I think we're going to press play first. What this is doing now is it's actually running through all its 13 different color patterns, all whilst swirling at one of three different speeds. Or you can go back to normal. And if I just pause the music. We can go through instead. I'll cycle through the different colors. I'll put at the end of the video uh, a full run through of the different uh, color patterns that it's got. I think is that almost all of them? No, that's the last of them RGB and white, and then one more. It turns it off. So you can see you've got the, the motorized lens in there. We've also got a lens here, which is all this one's doing is projecting an image of the moon up onto the ceiling. And we've got this laser here, which projects the, uh, the, the fading in and out star field. And that's the one thing that I don't like about this unit. Um, not so much the fact that it's got that, but the fact there are no warning labels on this to say what the power output is of that. What power class is it, and what's the you know what's the milliwatt output of it, and not even a warning to say this thing has a laser on it, so that I don't like. Well, I don't like the fact it's not labelled. You know, this is the sort of thing get this thing recalled from you know from sale. It could end up on the uh, on the Rapex list and just taken off sale. Um, but. Let's take a look through. I'm just going to go through. Um, well, as you saw it just then, it was running on the uh, on the power meter. It peaks, I think, playing music. It'll peak at about 1.8 amps. That's if it's running at its um, full brightness, because you can adjust the brightness, and running in RGBW mode, which is that. So that's his maximum power consumption. So with that on, this on, this on, and playing music through as well. It does have music built in as well, actually. If I disconnect the Bluetooth. Bluetooth is off. There we go. It's now got built in sound effects. You've got this jungle effect. Oops. Or a gurgling stream. Waves. It's like a lullaby and um, not so much a lullaby more uh, your call is very important to us please continue to hold but that's what it's got uh, it doesn't do sound to light to those 
uh, it just does sound to light to the uh, to the Bluetooth and it's got some delay timers on there and you can adjust the speed of the carousel or you can pause it completely uh, or you can one of the, one feature it's got is if you press the fade button uh, will it do it now yeah there we go it'll actually fade through all of its color schemes in sequence uh, from blue through red through green you know it goes right through the whole lot all the patterns through rgbw and then back to this again uh, but um i think that's enough looking at it like i said i'll i'll put at the very end of the video a full run through of all of its light patterns so let's turn it off and i've already taken the screws out so let's crack it open it's stuck shut by the labels let's I have already had this apart once. There we go, there's one off and then the other one will, is easier to force then. There we go. If I just disconnect that, there we are, we are in. Let's bring the camera in for a close up. So obviously you've got the motor, uh, no not the motor, sorry, the speaker on that one. And then we've got the, the motor, the mystery spec laser in a generously sized heatsink. The input connector, there's provision for a battery, but it doesn't actually have one fitted. And there's provision for a battery charger, but again it doesn't have one fitted. Some options of these do have that. Then round this side we've got the light for the the moon. So there's an LED which just beams through there. You've got the buttons on the edge. Connections for the laser. So you should be able to just bypass that. Let me just check that it can do that. If I disconnect the laser and power it up, just want to make sure it doesn't grumble about the lack of That seems fine. Um, if I turn Yeah, so it's it's happy to run with the laser disabled if you need to do that for safety reasons. Get that back off. So motor connection for the the moon connection for the motor, connection for the RGBW LED, which has actually got a 10 pin connector going down to it. And and that's it. Well, there's a, there's a small board. Let's um, dig a little deeper because I want to see, I just want to have a look at that, um, that lens assembly and see how it works. Well, that's the board with the infrared sensor there on the very long legs. It looks like they specially, it's almost like extended legs from there on. It's a it's definite um, ridge to them. On the other side then is, oh, there's not much to see. Can I trace that out? Can I be bothered to trace that out? Ah, why not? This is fairly modular and it reads right to left because, well, that's the way I drew it out. Over on the right, we've got a power amplifier chip, the XS9971, and there's whatever the A131 is, which is some sort of LED driver or laser driver, which is driving the laser. Further over, we have the infrared receiver, a Bluetooth antenna, and a custom IC, which is running all the show. The buttons are connected to that, and depending on what pull-down resistors it's got, it determines which button's pressed. That custom chip has some flashy EEPROM, which I assume is for the audio. Then there's a six-pin regulator chip, and below there, there's another mystery chip. There's no labeling on this at all, just no sign of any writing on it. But it's basically a one of two selector. 
a high or low on the select pin will determine which of the two RGBW LEDs is in use. That connects to a pair of MOSFETs to switch one of the two RGBW LEDs on. And the cathodes of each LED then go through an SS8050 transistor controlled by the custom chip. And there's a fifth one then at the end, which just does the moon. And that's it. So that's that. I'm going to dig a little deeper to check out the lens assembly. Oops. So this is the LED. What? Ah, one of the LEDs. So the two separate LEDs are actually on two separate boards. So there we go, that's the two RGBW LEDs. There we go. And the lens is this whole assembly which just comes out then. So there's a lens there which the one LED shines through and so the lens itself has two different patterns. You can see you've got the vortex swirl and you've got the um, the aurora section to the side. And then this entire frosted section is spun by the motor. Try, here we go. To have the, the wiping of the uh, the pattern effect so the one laser uh, the one LED set shines through there through the one lens into this and then up to there so that's getting a wave and there's actually two separate two slightly distinct patterns so it's sort of finer pattern here for this center section so you've got the one at the outer edge and then you've got the one much closer in which is going to be shining through there it hasn't got its own um, plastic lens there and again going into the vortex so that is how that works and it's interesting because someone's someone's had to design this really or poke and prod it some sort of sculpt some design until it sort of works roughly well so yeah that's that so there we have it, one flying saucer projector lamp, complete with dodgy laser of unknown power output. I shall leave you now with a quick demo of its entire audio-visual repertoire. Thank you very much for watching.